Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the morning market prep video for March 5th, 2021. Oh my goodness, yesterday. Um, hopefully you weren't hurt terribly by, um, by the price action yesterday. A lot of volatility continues to show itself. And if you have kind of heeded the warnings that I've been pointing out here in the morning market prep video, you hopefully respected those price resistance levels and didn't rush in trying to pick bottoms out of this market. Yesterday, Jerome Powell really stepped on a landmine, creating an awful lot of volatility here in the market and some technical damage. But was it all that bad? Maybe not so much. So how about we grab ourselves something to drink, settle into our office chairs, and let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Marker Prep video. Well, hey everyone, as we slide into this weekend, we have certainly had a challenging week in this market. Let's take a look at these technicals in the chart, see if we can get some information out of that. Maybe determine how we might want to approach this market for the day. So as you can see, the way I've got this drawn here on uh, the Dow, we have broken this uptrend. And I don't think there's too many people that would dispute that fact. And although we have attempted several times, I'm going to zoom this up, and we have the buy the dip buyers came rushing in, rushing in, rushing in, trying to push this up. Ooh, we got that sudden hit yesterday on those Jerome Powell comments on inflation. Bond rates rising rapidly yesterday after his comments, and um, it just took the market down hard. Now, the good news in this chart is that we responded back bullishly after we finally settled out um, kind of finished stripping out stop losses and those kind of things. And we ended up rallying and holding yesterday on the Dow right there on its 50 day moving average. Now, overnight we had some pretty ugly price action in the futures. And you can see that as of right now, the bulls are trying to put on a brave face this morning, um, heading into some economic data. We'll wanna watch this pretty closely and just remember, keep in mind that if we can hold on to that 50 day average here in the Dow, then this is, um, we could look at this as maybe a technically double bottom where we bottomed here and rallied back and bottomed here. So it's really going to be an interesting challenge for those bulls. Can they, can they defend this area? And I think largely that question is going to be answered if we continue to watch the bonds. If the long bonds continue to rise, those inflation worries will continue to embolden those bears and we could see some more selling. So we're gonna have to just kind of be slipping along here on pins and needles for a little bit watching uh, carefully. Let's hope those bulls have enough energy to fight back. Now let's take a look at something that's not quite as favorable. If we take a look at the SPY, SPY, at the end of the day yesterday gave up its 50 day moving average. And obviously this was a painful sell off for a lot of folks. Notice that we are officially in a downtrend. We have made lower highs, lower lows, and that downtrend does exist. Now, falling below the 50-day moving average can cause some significant problems for the index. We need to see um, those prices rally right back above, get back above and then prove to hold. I would expect there's going to be significant price volatility over the next several trading days as we try to work this out, whether or not we can come on back. Now, we do have that data today that could, maybe it inspires us higher, maybe it inspires us lower. Um, so we're kind of, um, again, just on pins and needles here. One thing I wanna point out is that we're starting to see this little bit of a 50-day moving average flattening out here in the SPY, if we project that forward. So we really need to see those bear or bulls come in and defend hard to push this back up because if we can't get above that 50 and hold, 
then we run the risk of running into that 50-day moving average as resistance. And that's where we could pick up our next lower high and um, see more selling come into the market. So let's watch that closely. Technically here, we've got some technical damage or we've got some damage in this, these charts that need to be repaired. And it may be challenging to get that done if those bonds continue to rally. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at the Qs. Well, the Qs really, really stubbed their toe here uh, big time, failing at the 50-day moving average. And I was warning of this, that big, ugly, bearish, engulfing candle failure here. And now we, we're creating some additional technical damage. And the Qs has got a long road ahead of it here, I think, to recover. So first off, we have a downtrend in play. And let's notice that our shorter term moving averages are moving down pretty sharply. And it's almost impossible not to see this, that the 50-day moving average is flattening out and possibly rolling. This is going to create a resistance level in this chart, not to mention the new price resistance level that we have to deal with here in the NASDAQ. So if this rallies back up into here, we'll want to be watching that closely if this engages that resistance area and that downtrend in the chart. If we can't push on through there, we could run into more selling. So watch that closely and carefully. Obviously, we don't want to see that occur but we have to respect the, the price resistance in the chart and realize that that possibility does exist. Now, having said that, we have the Senate moving forward with the massive stimulus bill. And while we, I would have been thinking that the stimulus bill is already priced in, well, now with this pullback, maybe not. And we may get a little bit more bullish reaction to that stimulus bill as it moves through the Senate or passes through. So we're going to want to watch this pretty closely. I would expect quite a little bit of volatility over the next several trading days as we try to work through these details and see whether or not we can uh, fix some of this technical damage. Then if we take a look at IWM, IWM is hanging in there pretty darn nice, like the Dow, hanging in there pretty darn nicely. So we have two of our indexes that held up relatively well and holding onto its 50-day moving average. And the tech-heavy SPY and QQQ really suffering some substantial damage. So I think we are in a short-term oversold condition and that we could bounce, but with the data that we have coming our way, anything is possible. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now our VIX was signaling yesterday that higher low could be a problem for us. And we had these little this little upside trend and we held that higher low. And I've been warning of that, that the real selling doesn't occur until we create that higher low here in um, the VIX. And it certainly happened yesterday with those bears coming out in force. Now let's take note that we have closed up here around 28 handles. We're up above the 200 day moving average on the VIX. and um, if we get some bullish news today, if we can start to calm down a little bit, or if those bonds start to pull back a bit, hopefully we'll see this continuing to settle down. But we're still going to have to stay on our toes because as we settle down, we can run into that support area and still see that bounce higher. So watch that closely. We're not out of the woods here yet, and there's going to be um, probably some pain and suffering in the in wild price volatility as this continues to chop around. Please keep in mind, I've been warning about this, this choppy market environment is a dangerous place to be. And if you don't have a lot of experience in this market, you can literally have your accounts chopped to pieces as we just bounce around in these ranges. So be very, very careful. It might be wise to pull back on your trading, be more picky about the trades that you take, or just stand aside and let this volatility work itself out before risking more money um, in this. It's uncertain where we're going to go from here. Um, so watch carefully. Then let's take a look at um, our T2122. Now T2122 is our four week new high, new low ratio. And yesterday 
at um, the bottom of our sell-off down here, we were way down in, into that bullish reversal zone. So let's hope that um, we get a good enough data um, um, numbers. We'll talk about that in just a second. We get a good, good enough data and those bonds start to ease a little bit, some of those tensions, and we start to uh, take a breath here. We'll be able to bounce up out of here. Um, I would not rule out, I would not rule out um, that we make another test of the low. So keep that in mind. We could bounce a little bit this morning and then see another test of the low before we finally relieve that and start pushing back higher, but watch that closely. These doggone nasty whipsaws that we're seeing right here obviously are challenging a lot of folks and probably chopping up a lot of accounts. So be really careful, stand aside. We don't, you know, one of the things, the market's open, that doesn't mean we have to be in it. We don't have to be risking money. So be very, very careful. Avoid that fear of missing out and be very focused on um, the kind of charts that you're trading. Um, because this market can certainly suck that money right out of your accounts really, really fast. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. And this is where we're going to see possibly a little volatility this morning. On our economic calendar, we've got that monthly, whoops, there we go. We've got that monthly um, employment situation number this morning and we've been uh, dealing with jobs um, all week here well since wednesday dealing with jobs and that's been challenging here for the market so that's going to be an interesting number now economists are expecting that we will pump up just a little bit that we'll see a an improvement over last month but they are also still warning that we are a long ways away from a recovery um, and the jobless numbers. Keep in mind that yesterday we had 745,000 applied for first time unemployment benefits and we've got about 30 million people right now um, utilizing those um, unemployment services right now. So we got a long ways to go here, but if we can get that improvement, that may be just enough to um, um, bring those bulls back uh, to work and maybe hold those bears at bay for at least a little while. So let's watch that. And then we have the international trading goods number. Um, we know that that number is terrible. We've been ignoring it for a long time. Um, I would expect that we will continue to do that. Notice we have a Fed speaker here at uh, uh, later on today, but um, we get through these. Um, shouldn't be too, too much um, additional things out there for fireworks unless we get some political news. Um, that would raise some concerns about um, stimulus or if those bond rates continue to um, rally and rise. A couple charts I would suggest that you keep an eye on. Um, TNX, whoops. Oh, got it. Sorry about that. TNX. Well, why is that doing that? TNX-X, um, you'll want to keep an eye on this. This is the 10-year Treasury yield. Um, we'll want to um, um, watch this and, and notice that we are seeing uh, that bullish price action in here. That was yesterday's candle watch that closely we need to start seeing that pull back and also um, tyx is another we'll want to keep an eye on the 30-year treasuries of course keeping an eye on tlt and tbt might be a good idea as well now tbt is the ultra short 20 year and you can see it's gapped up a little bit this morning but at the moment trying to pull back just a little bit so um, still some pressure here in those bonds, so watch that close. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar today. And our earnings calendar is a lot lighter. Um, we don't have as much on there, but if you guys want to um, catch those notables, you might want to click that link before below the title of the video and go back to those notable reports. Only about 25 companies reporting earnings today, 24, 25. Uh, reporting earnings. A couple of notables that I will bring up here this morning that you might want to pay attention to. 
Um, we've got big lots that we'll be reporting today. They've been in a nice upside move here just recently. Um, Pumping up here, breaking some big resistance levels in the chart. Now pulling back, so this will be an important report. We'll want to keep an eye on that. Um, we also have HIBB. Uh, we'll be reporting today. Just a recent little pullback with the market. But overall, this has been trending up nicely. Keep an eye on this. Specialty retail and those little retailers have been doing quite well here recently, holding up. So um, definitely worth keeping an eye on. And... Ruth Chris um, might be something to pay attention to today as it reports. A lot of the, lot of the reports are the smaller cap, um, probably not going to be all that notable overall. So just keep an eye on those as we move through uh, the morning. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me a favor. If this is the first time that you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. And hopefully, guys, over this, particularly over a week like this, you've seen the importance of focusing in on what the chart is telling you, not what we want the market to be, but focusing in on the support, resistance, and trend levels in the chart. And if you guys find that to be helpful to just remove the hype, remove all of the, all of the nervous energy and just focus in on those charts. If you find that to be helpful, please click that subscribe or those thumbs up buttons and leave a brief comment. Um, I truly, truly appreciate it. And you guys are awesome. And if you um, want to support the channel, um, as I continue to try and grow and um, uh, improve the channel, if you want to support the channel, there is a link down there where you can buy me a coffee, support the channel. And I truly appreciate that. I just want to uh, give a huge shout out to those folks who have supported the channel that way. You guys are awesome. That's going to help me with uh, camera equipment, new things to um, um, to add to the channel uh, content. And you guys are awesome. I truly, truly appreciate you so much. You can't even imagine. Let's take a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up. Now, we have to take all of this with a grain of salt and remember that um, we have a lot of danger in this market to be watchful of. Um, volatility is likely going to remain high, so it may be wise to just stand aside, wait um, on these to settle in or settle out, um, and be very, very careful about how you approach the market for today. Let's take a look. Um, one of the stocks that you guys know, I've been paying attention to Ford, and I actually own Ford. And I like the chart here um, overall. And although we've had this price volatility, notice in here that we're still holding on to that trend. So as brutal as the market has been, Ford is holding up quite well. Let's keep an eye on that. Um, if we can get some bullishness, you could see how we could gain or bounce right off of that trend and support and possibly even move on up. Now, I wouldn't rule out the possibility as well that this may have to rest in here along this consolidation area a little bit longer, but keep that in mind. I think it would be a good idea to keep an eye on um, John Deere. Now, John Deere has pulled back with the market as you can see, and it is pulling back in a rather controlled fashion. Um, the, some of the big industrials are holding up quite well, so keep an eye on John Deere. This pullback, as we rest in here, give it a couple, three days to kind of settle out this volatility, have it rest, then we may be able to see that next upside move here in John Deere. Keep a close eye on that. If we're gonna mention John Deere, I think we gotta mention Caterpillar. Now, Caterpillar has had a tremendous upside move here recently, but notice this pullback, even though the market has been very, very volatile, that pullback isn't all that substantial or all that rough, so keep a close eye on that. If we can hold in an area like this and just rest for a little bit, we may have to rest for this bigger trend to catch up, but keep an eye on that. Caterpillar has held up overall quite well. I think we should take a look at the financials. Now the financials, even though we have had um, this ugly, ugly volatility in the market, 
these financials have held up quite well. So keep an eye on any of those big banks or um, an ETF like XLF and watch as we rest out here, we could catch that next upside move in the financials. We also have to take a look at energy. Um, energy and oil have been doing very, very well. And you can see yesterday with the selling in the market, energy, um, oil, sector stocks moved up nicely. So keep an eye on that and it looks like they're bullish this morning trying to push on through to the upside. So keep an eye on those energy sector stocks, ExxonMobil, um, Devon Energy, all of those kind of stocks are looking quite good. So watch those closely. Now it's been really kind of remarkable that some of the little retail stocks are holding up quite well. Take a look at Under Armour. Under Armour's had a lot of challenges here over the last few years, but holding on to a support level here and looking pretty good. Now keep an eye on that. Um, you know, stocks that can hold up through this ugliness can sometimes really take off. So keep an eye on Under Armour. Obviously not much for selling in there in that chart and you can see that in several of the small retailers out there um, they are worth keeping an eye on Kohl's for example suffered a little bit of a pullback they've gotten past their earnings this is a pretty darn nice chart um, any way you slice it that is a pretty darn nice chart so watch this in here Kohl's could be pushing um, on up Keep a close eye on that if it can come back around. Now Disney, Disney had kind of a rough little pullback here, but Disney continues to hold in its trend and looking pretty good overall. If we can continue to hold onto this support level and hold onto that trend, keep an eye on this. Disney could be ready for that next upside move um, in the chart. So watch that closely and carefully. Um, if you're looking for short trades, I would be looking to the tech sector stocks. Now, I wouldn't be chasing those to the downside. I would wait for a rally back up. When we take a look at Apple, Apple certainly suffering awfully here um, in the trade. If you understand options, you might want to think about bull put credit spreads and catch that bounce. We have that possibility of a double bottom. If you really um, love Apple, you, you could maybe take some risk here. That's not a, the kind of trade I would take. But if you're thinking short, in these uh, stocks, let these rally back a bit and look for that downtrend and watch for those potential shorts to come in that area. Watch those carefully. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day, and I want to wish you great success in your trading. If, um, if you're heading out early for this weekend, and I could certainly understand that with the volatility that we've seen in the market, just shutting down and heading out and enjoying the nice weekend. Um, looks like the weather's pretty nice across the country. So everyone take care, be safe, and we'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. I wish you all the best.